shopping spree. Sean McVay's team up 3 nothing as we begin the second quarter. It's third down. Stafford is six for six so far. Commander show blitz. They pull back at the end. Stafford passes complete to Cup. And Cup is out of bounds. They gave him too much space up to the 32 yard line. Most of the time you'd think with a blitz there'd be man coverage afterwards, but that's a zone blitz. So you're bringing five, you think you've overloaded an error, and when you play zone, you're a little bit short on the zone. You can see two guys going deep, another guy short. So you had three over two, but you didn't have the eyes in the proper place. But Benjamin St. Juice, he had a feel for it, and then he stopped and let Cup get outside and just an easy completion for Stafford. Yes, yeah, Stafford said it was great to see Cup last week against the Ravens go over 100 yards. So it was nice to see him spin the football and celebrate. Here's Williams. Williams runs hard up to the 37-yard line. It's a gain of five. Deron Payne made the tackle. Now, this is not the same receiving crew that the Rams had when they won the Super Bowl, but they've got some pretty good weapons. It's similar. It's similar because you had Cup and you had Woods, two really unselfish guys that do a lot of different things because this Rams team lives in 11 personnel. A 93% of plays this year, the most ever in the next-gen era in 11 personnel. They could do that because Nakua and Cup both can act as receivers and run blockers. Part of that 11 personnel is Higby on the right side of the offensive line. Off the play fake, Stafford on second down, steps up in the pocket, and he's in trouble. He's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Quan Martin was the first one there. No gain. It'll be third down. There's a competitiveness in Matthew Stafford that, as a coach, you wish you could take away. When he tries to run up through the pocket here, Jay, you're going, get down. Throw it. <laughs> get down. Not to throw it. Get down. Protect yourself because yeah. you realize what a valuable commodity he is. But he's so competitive, those competitive juices don't go out easily. Two of three on third down so far. He's just going to throw this one to the sidelines. Oh, and he could be keep his feet in. They said he did. What a catch. 14 yards. What a catch. What a throw. I mean, that's the thing that makes. Watch Matthew Stafford here. Watch the off platform throw. He's kind of going through all his reads, gets to his last read, and then just kind of flicks it sidearm. And look at the accuracy oh. to Higby. Excellent job. Little toe drag swag there, James Lofton. That, that's impressive, but more impressive that flat footed, almost underhand throw. I mean, when you talk about arm angles. Yeah, it's special. Yeah, put him on the list. A first down, Williams. Williams slowed up and then assessed a little bit. Cody Barton made the tackle. Gain of two. It was almost like he was playing knock-knock. And he went for somebody to go, who's there? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of defensive linemen. <laughs> so second down and eight. 3-0 Rams. They got a 22-yard field goal in the first quarter. Sam Howell unable to convert on a fourth down that gave the Rams the football. There's Cody Barton. He's been busy so far today. They love these condensed formations and then the crossing routes out of them. Stafford was looking for cut. Now he goes to Williams out of the backfield. Williams. Cuts to his right. That little cut gave him a few more yards. Kendall Fuller, the outstanding quarterback, made the tackle. A yard shy of the first down, a gain of seven. 11 forced missed tackles last, last week against the Ravens. This offense so much better when Kyron, Kyron Williams is in there. It's just a completely different dynamic because he runs the ball so well. He's in the passing game. 25 receptions coming into the game, and he's just a special player. Stafford is 9 for 9 so far. 86 yards on third down. He'll just go to Williams, and Williams got the first down. And more, and lower his shoulder inside the 35. Cody Barton again with the tackle. Now here's Williams. Uh, Sean McVay told us, listen, I watched him a lot at Notre Dame. Kyron Williams, like I said, the eyeball test, he has a burst that you don't see on all the other 31 other teams. Going to the 10th snap for the Rams inside Commander's territory. Off the play fake. Stafford to cut. Cut led to the 30. 
And he's down toward the 25. Kendall Fuller makes the tackle. Tiffany, what do you have? Yeah, Tom, more on Kyron. And McVay told us when he saw him coming out of Notre Dame, he said, I said, this guy is a ram. He's been so impressed with what he's been able to handle, the workload they've been giving him, the amount of carries, and his toughness and contact balance, guys. But again, Tom, he said he was one of his favorite players coming out of college back then. I thought last week, I thought what stood out to me was not only his running ability, but, but the way he blocked and picked up those extra linemen in the backfield. And, and they've been testing him here, trying to run straight at him, and he stood up every time. They go to Williams again. And Williams has got the first down, down to the 22. All right, so with Williams, without Williams, it's a big difference. Yeah, it certainly is. And this is an offense that has changed. It's really all throughout Sean McVay's tenure, he has taken this offense and molded it to what his guys do best. They decided in this offseason, hey, we're going to be more physical. We're going to be more downhill. They brought in the dual runs. This has always been an offense based on the wide zone, mid zone principles, James. But this year was going to be more about physicality and downhill, those double teams and the duos. And he fits that. He even told us, like, I really like those runs because I can see it better. Well, he's over a thousand scrimmage yards, the first running back since Gurley to be that way. Look at that stop and then that little jet to the left. He fumbled the football, and the commanders fall on top of it. Kendall Fuller fell on top of it. After all of that, Washington forces the turnover. Cody Barton knocked it out. Kendall Fuller recovered it. And that's a huge play for Ron Rivera's team. By the way, uh, so here's Williams. He fumbles. Uh, we mentioned that Fuller fell on top of it. It was Percy Butler who came in to knock it away after Barton wrapped him up. Good job by Butler. Here's Gibson. Gibson up to the 10 yard line. Quinton Lake makes the tackle. Gain of two. You got to give Raheem Morris a lot of credit this year for this defense and what he's been able to do. It's such a young defense. So many inexperienced guys. You know, when they don't have a first round pick, they haven't taken one since 2016. That's going to have an impact on depth, obviously. And you're going to have to do a lot more with Little. And that's what Raheem Morris has done this year. And it's a guy who I think should be one of the top candidates when we talk about head coaches going forward into this next season. Yeah, we asked him, is the defense a reflection of you? He said, I'd like to think so. He said, but that would be egotistical. But I know they play with great energy. They give it to Gibson again. Gibson is swarmed up to the 13-yard line. It'll be third down. All right, so it's third down and somewhat manageable. But what are you guys looking at here for the commanders? Well, when you say somewhat manageable, you go, how are we going to manage Aaron Donald? Because right there, with your protection, where does he line up? Is he going to line up in the center guard gap? Is he going to line up over one of the tackles? So you first have to identify him. And right now, he's lined up on the hash. Kind of just stalking the offense <laughs> and the offensive linemen are going. I hope he doesn't come near me. I hope he doesn't come near me. Yeah, the right guard kind of got wide eyed and the right tackle. Jonathan Williams in the backfield. Howell's in trouble. He overthrows Williams. Pressure was coming. Rose Boom and Byron Young were both there. We talked about the residual effect of having Aaron Donald on that offensive line. I mean, he got off. All eyes were on him, but at least mine were. And his initial push, he knocks the guard all the way back into the running back who's trying to cross the formation. So he disrupts everything that you've drawn up with your pencils and papers. And he goes, this is not going to work against me. you got to try something different. Well, he gets this one off. Trammell's going to come up. He calls for the fair catch, and he grabs it at the 48-yard line. 3 nothing Rams love excellent. It's just so hard, James, for defenses, you know, when you're running all the way across, but an offensive line has to do a good job as well because they got to give that quarterback time for that play to develop. And you don't think about deep speed when you're crossing, but it's the same distance that you go on a deep route. So he has that long strider speed that everybody talks about. Three receivers at the top of your screen. Stafford looking to his left. That's a lateral behind a lot of scrimmage to Freeman. And Freeman will get to midfield. It's a gain of about three yards. Kind of a little message there. Kyra Moore fumbles, and so Freeman comes in the game. Freeman's been a pretty good uh, secondary back for the Rams. Yeah, 300 yards, four and a half per carry, and a couple of touchdowns when Kyron Williams was injured and not playing in the middle of the season. Still on the sidelines. Rams of 70 yards on the ground, 93 in the air. Stafford 10 of 10. 
Little pitch to Freeman. Cuts back left. It is wrapped up by Hudson. You know, being a San Diego resident, Royce Freeman in Southern California, is in, during his career, 7,600 yards rushing, 11.8 yards per carry before he went off to be an Oregon Duck. So you talk about productive, and a guy who ended up being a, a pretty early pick with the Denver Broncos, but was never really able to get his footing. Had a couple of good years early in his career. He's kind of trying to get it restarted here with the Rams. Over 1,700 yards on the ground in his career. Stafford facing a third down. Pass complete to Cup. His favorite receiver. And come to the 40-yard line. Kendall Fuller makes the tackle. It's a first down. Oh, wait a minute. How do you know that's his favorite receiver? Well, they have a podcast together. Okay. Everybody should be his favorite receiver. How about Higby? How about Puka? Oh. He's got a lot of favorite receivers. His route, his favorite, one of his favorite routes is that choice route, allowing Cooper Cup to read the defense and giving him the freedom to be able to decide which way he's going to go. Nice little completion there. And it's not easy to get two yards of separation on a four-yard route. Here's Robinson. He's a runner. Robinson inside the 30. And Robinson inside the 20-yard line. Cody Barton tracked him down from behind. Big opportunity today for Demarcus Robinson. Had a good game against the Ravens. Tutu Atwell, the guy who they've been using in motion and on some of these reverses, not playing today. And so Demarcus Robinson getting a big opportunity, James. Eric Yarbrough, who is the wide receiver coach, told me, he said, when we play, everybody plays but everybody blocks and right at the beginning of that play Cooper cut sticking his nose in there Puka does the same thing so these guys are in it for each other being a team being a good teammate play clock is down under five no big deal and it's a Freeman Freeman right up the middle and he's down inside the 15 of the thir 13 Barton again with the tackle Ron Rivera has watched the Rams offense have 11 plays, 12 plays, and now this next play will be the sixth of this drive. So they're chewing up a lot of real estate, but they only have three points. Well, you cause one turnover, so you get them out. You have another one where you force them to kick the field goal. And right now, if you're Ron Rivera, you've used up a lot of your good red zone plays in situations, so you just hope that you don't get broken right here. Inside handoff to Nakua. Nakua. And he gets down maybe a yard. Claude Martin makes the tackle. It'll be third down. So, so Tom, there's the motion that you're talking about. Trying to use motion to get angles in the run game for Nakua. But a good job by that commander's defense getting penetration and stopping it. You can see here's the motion going one way. And who's and the lead blocker back. there? Cooper Cup is the lead blocker. <laughs> but that's just an excellent job by Martin. Martin, the rookie out of Illinois, on third down. Stafford to the middle, he's got Cup, and Cup inside the five, and he's down close to the one. Twelve straight passes to start the game completed for Stafford. They line Cup up in the backfield as a running back, and then he comes out, there's the choice route I talked about. He can go either way, sets the defender up, comes back inside, and Stafford on time. That's almost impossible to stop. First and goal, they give it to Freeman. Freeman. Kendall Fuller came and wrapped him up from behind. By the way, from a Stafford standpoint, 20 in a row is, a, is the record for him with the Detroit Lions. It's amazing, I think, sometimes when I think about quarterbacks and their consecutive completions. I've seen some quarterbacks who can't complete 20 in a row against air. <laughs> <laughs> I have <So>. too. <laughs> that was back in 2017 against the Ravens. Second and goal. Williams still on the sidelines. This is Freeman's drive. He's in the backfield. Cup in motion. Stafford under pressure just throws it away. Deron Payne, the outstanding defensive tackle. He and Jonathan Allen are just tremendous. He came sliding in. Yeah, it's been tough for them ever since they traded Montez Sweat and Chase Young. They've been getting double teamed so much more, almost twice as much. And Here's Kyron Williams coming back in, but the defensive tackles inside Payne and Allen, that's the strength of this defense. 
Both guys teammates at Alabama where they won a national championship. Williams back in in the backfield as Jay mentions. Davis Allen in motion. They give it to Williams. Williams goes to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown Rams. Nothing, Los Angeles, the 23-year-old with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. I talked about it earlier, the duo that they brought in this year, the double teams inside, two double teams, and Kyron Williams, you see two double teams inside, and Kyron Williams, I'll run right behind that, a good powerful run to get in the end zone. I think he was very patient on that run. He didn't bounce it to the outside where you thought you saw clear yardage, but he just kept it up inside and powered his way in. Point after is good. They're also 104 rushing yards, 109 passing. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, join JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights that's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. So many games around the National Football League with some importance when it comes to the postseason, including this one. There's Pringle. He's going to return this. And Pringle gets up across the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Tiffany indication of how he's feeling guys he was up and laughing during it talking with his d-line coaches well that's a good thing he is back on the field well tiffany i think he's probably trying to keep it warm when you have a tight groin or something like that you get to the sideline you don't want it to get cold and stiffen up on you so you keep that heating pad on there to keep it loose now looking to throw pressure's coming now throws up in the middle and deflected nearly intercepted john bates was the intended receiver and there were hands everywhere. Witherspoon, I think he wondered if he should have picked that one off. Well, Tom, you know what they say about DBs. If they could catch, they'd be a receiver on <laughs> offense. Witherspoon probably should have that one. And for the tight end who the ball ricochets off his chest, it is so hard to track the ball when you see hands that are in front and you think, oh, it's going to be intercepted, and then all of a sudden it jumps on you. Saw that note. 20 offensive snaps for the Rams inside Commander's territory. This will be the 21st play for the Commander's overall. Pressure's coming out of the backfield. Gibson, did he hang on? No signal yet. No incomplete. You know, we can look at a quarterback's completion percentage. Sam Howe, 65.8. Sometimes that doesn't tell the entire story because if you can be accurate on your throws and that throw a little bit on the back shoulder, making Gibson turn for it, Yes, it would have been a tough catch, but if you can get that ball out in front with some touch on it, a lot easier to make those completions. Well, I think Sam Howell did a pretty good job there. They're bringing a blitz. He understood where to go, knew his answer was, and I think his running back should have caught that ball, especially a guy who used to play receiver jams. Yeah, five straight incompletions for Howell. I think his foot was out of bounds when he <laughs> touched, finally caught the ball, because they're reviewing it night right now. Ron Rivera pulled out the challenge flag, and I think his foot, was out of bounds when he finally got control of it because that ball never hit the ground. Great job catching that ball with his hands. Well, Ron thinks they caught it, so he's challenging yeah. that. Here's the ball loose. But watch as he it's finally, in between his legs. But as he finally gets it, his right foot, once he goes over, it turns over one more time. Well, still ball, not on the ground, not on the ground. Now I when he, he finally comes to, to, to having it right there, that Roy right on foot the field, is out of bounds. Pass is being challenged by Washington. Very close. I think he had it there. It's, it's where he gets control. So if he has control and his butt's on the ground, it's a catch. It doesn't matter where his feet end up. But it's where he has control of that ball. All right, we'll take a timeout. They'll take a look at it. Rams on top, 10-0. Gene Steratore, that was a circus grab there, wasn't it? It sure was. And you know, James is always rolling catch on things, yeah, Tommy. Yes. So I had to look a couple of times, but he definitely confirmed a great job in keeping his body and keeping the ball off the ground for sure. Well, McLaurin just missed that one. He got hit as he put his hands on it. Michael Hoyt made the hit. Sam Howell is late with this ball because oh, Harry yeah. McLaurin is wide open. And if he gets it to him quick, he's got an opportunity to cut up field. And he's late. Watch him right now. Throw it. Throw it. He's late, and he leads him right into the linebacker. Mm. And then that's a big hit. Yeah. you got to protect your receivers, though, when you're playing the quarterback position as well. You really do, especially guys who are fearless. There are some guys who would have short on that ball, not even gone for it. So glad he got up and got to the sideline. So the Rams will get it back with three timeouts left at 156 here in the first half. Ways punt. 
Tremble calls for the fair catch at the 28 yard line. 39. Again, the Rams, three timeouts left. Big B in motion. Williams gets the handoff. Williams. With a cut to his left. Hudson eventually made the tackle close to midfield. So we talked about those two really good defensive tackles, Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen. And they use their aggressiveness fighting up the field outside of the guards to their disadvantage. Left that whole middle of the field wide open. Higby again, and Higby is out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Two really good plays by Higby to get out of bounds, just being physical, and he brings so, so much back. You know, he was out with a neck injury, and when he's in there, you know, not only catching the ball, which he came in with 34 receptions, but he's such a willing blocker and really loves contact, and he, he's a big part of this offense. Well, he is too fast for the linebackers and too big for the strong safeties at 255 pounds. You're finding strong safeties now are shrinking. 205 is about as much as most guys weigh back then. Second down at five. Williams slid the ball from Stafford. Stafford watches Williams fumble again. It's picked up by the commanders. St. Juice knocked it loose. Cam Curl picked it up. Second fumble of the first half for Williams. Defense. First down, Washington. Wow. What a big play for this commander's team because they, they come in, they're minus 10 in the turnover margin this year. You know, they only had seven fumble recoveries coming into the game, and St. Juice does a good job because that play was there. They had a big play, he gets his hand on the ball and just rips it out. And a poor job, James, by Kyron Williams of protecting that ball. Yeah, he's in big play mode as opposed to ball security mode at that point. Got to have that ball high and tight. Every running back will tell you that. You can see the air that's there between his body and the ball. And that's why the ball gets pulled out because he gets right at the top of the ball instead of squeezing that ball and rubbing those numbers off the front of your jersey. That's troublesome, though, for the for the Rams that he has two fumbles in this first half. Now let's see what Sam Howell and the Commanders can do offensively. Three timeouts left. See the two takeaways. They're 28th in the National Football League in that category. Gibson's not going to get much. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Johnson made the tackle. Well, that was just a great play by Johnson. They so covered two pre-snap, and Johnson quickly rotated, came up, and made a good tackle inbounds. Go. Second and ten. Howell on the run, and Samuel had it. He went off his chest, incomplete. And now third down. Reminder, Joey Sly has a big, what, what did you say yesterday, Jay, about his foot, Joey Sly? He's got a cannon. Yeah. I mean, he can, if you get into the 40-yard 40 40-yard 40 line, the other he's 40, in range. Right? That's right. No, yeah, not this 40, <laughs> yeah. One more yard. It's not that big. <laughs> it's Sam Howell is under distress right now because he's, he's planting that back foot and he's having to move as soon as he starts to plant it. Uh, that's been the story of the year for this commander's offense. 58 sacks and always under pressure. Only one third down conversion in this half. He's back pedaling. He's in trouble. He's going down. Ernest Jones wrapped him up. Bob the Rams have hit the timeout button here. That's a loss of eight. 59 sacks against the Commanders this year. The Rams only blitz 27%. Watch him right there. Nice little move. They bring him on a linebacker blitz. And just a night nice on the turf. Ray falls on top of it, and it gets even worse for the Commanders. And I think Tress Way might be hurt now as well. Be. I mean, when you watch this snap, this is the kind of snap you see in high school, you know, for a long snapper, not an NFL long snapper. Watch this ball, it just gets stuck. He just snaps it directly into the ground. It doesn't even make it halfway back, and there's nothing Tress Way can do but jump on it. Uh, this affects your, now your PATs, your field everything, goal, everything. your holder. Yeah, they're dealing with him now on the field. Cameron Cheeseman is the long snapper. And there wasn't anything dirty about that play. I, I think when he got jumped on, that's when he got hurt. We'll take a timeout and be back. Presway going into the tent for the commanders and being assessed, trying to stretch out that neck a little bit. While he was doing that, Sly was letting some punts loose on the sidelines. He's the place kicker. 
And now the Rams in perfect spot to wind down this first half, already up 10 0. Williams in the backfield. Stafford to his left. That's right away. That was Jones who knocked that one away. Andre Jones, the rookie from Louisiana. Well, James, here's what happened. You got five guys over here on this side. So it's 5-3. Chase Blackburn does a good job. It's an overload. And so Cheeseman, the snapper, is thinking about getting out and protecting to his right because there's five men over there, and he forgot about his main job, which was snapping it. Ends up with a turnover, and your punter gets hurt. But that's a good job putting pressure on a team by Chase Blackburn, the special teams coordinator for the Rams. 31 seconds left. Two timeouts for the Rams. Nakua by himself at the bottom of your screen. Stafford looking for Williams. He overthrows him. It'll be third down. Hudson, the linebacker, was in coverage. You know, when you get down into the deep red zone inside the 15-yard line, it just condenses the field. And if you're able to drop seven in that time, you almost had seven with an asterisk because the defensive end contacted Kyron Williams on his way out trying to get his matchup against the uh, linebacker outside. So you had eight guys back against the defense. And Matthew Stafford, smart. Take one read, throw it away, get to the next play. Whistle blows. Timeout called. It's the Rams who called the timeout. So one left to go. First charge timeout, Washington. 30 oh, excuse seconds me. timeout. We'll flip it. It's Washington who called the timeout. The NFL and CBS streams live on Paramount Plus all season long through Super Bowl 58, including next week's outstanding Week 16 matchups. Try it for free today. And again, there's so much in the balance of the National Football League as far as the postseason. Goes. I mean, when you look around in, in both the AFC and the NFC, there were so many teams at six and seven and seven and six. It's just there's six, seven teams in, in both sides and both conferences. It's just amazing. So there's so many teams that are in it. When every game weekend, matters. When we, this weekend started, 22 out of the 32 were still in it. That's big time for the National Football League. Here it's third and ten for the Rams. Robinson at the bottom of your screen. Stafford looking underneath to Williams and he won Hobson. And I think Stafford was hit late. They're going to get Jonathan Allen, I believe. Would you say late or was he hit low? He was hit low. No, maybe that's, that's what it. they're going to call. Yeah. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 94 in the defense. The penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Yeah, it's Payne, not Allen, who's called for the penalty. Allen was on the other side. Oh, well, that's the play that they want to take out. You think about Tom Brady when he tore his ACL, and that's really where they started implementing this, and they don't want those quarterbacks to get hit because of the risk of injury, and we've seen so many starting quarterbacks around the NFL get hurt this year, and those are the kind of plays they want to limit, and that was a big play because now you get first down. You're going to force a field goal, right. and now you get first down for the Rams. First and goal inside the 10. Empty backfield, Stafford pumps a few times. Stafford now runs. And Stafford is tracked down at the five yard line. Two Hill made the tackle. Probably called another timeout here. He did. So it'll be second and goal. So for the person who's watching a football game for the first time at home with their friends and they're getting explained the game, well, you hit the quarterback low on the previous play. That time you tackled him. Well, he's a runner at that point. That's Trezway going into the locker room for the commanders. All right, what are you guys thinking here? Second and goal for the five. Well, you want to obviously get two plays here. You got a timeout as well. So you want to get two shots at the end zone, and if you don't get it, you'll kick the field goal. But I'd like to look to Puka Nakua here. Get him in a matchup that you like, move him around, utilize him and Cooper Cup together. Yeah, those two guys are the most targeted inside the red zone for the Rams. They're on opposite sides of the fields right now before the motion. Here it comes. Bigby goes in motion late off the play fake. Stafford looking left. Shovel pass forward for Williams, and he is gobbled up. Jonathan Allen was in the neighborhood and just ripped him down, and a timeout called by Sean McVay. James, they were trying to get Higby. They went motion with Cup and then motion with Higby. Stafford looks, and it's not there. That's a pretty dangerous little shovel pass. It's a loss of four on the play. You know, we were talking about arm angles and different things like that. That's an underarm option flip forward. 
But if that ball is not caught and it hits the ground, just an incomplete pass. All right, reminder to uh, Lucas Habersick, who is the uh, second year kicker out of Arizona. He kicked well last week, but he's had some issues. I mean, if you're thinking field goal here. Well, he made the kick in the in the first quarter, and, and this would be a short field goal. He certainly didn't have a good warm up, and it didn't give the coaches a lot of confidence. The third and goal. There he is. Basically won the job back for Mason Crosby last week. There you got Nakua there, and you got Cup, Cooper Cup there. Stafford throws to the pylon on the left side. And he was looking for Robinson. It's incomplete. Coverage by St. Juice. Yeah, the Rams will get a field goal opportunity. Kind of a curious call there, James. You got Cooper Cup and Akua lined up, and you just go with a little jump ball to Demarcus Robinson on Benjamin St. Juice. Well, that safety had moved over toward the three wide receiver side, so you want to get the ball out of your hands quickly. That's a great job by the commanders with that sudden change that happened to them and then giving up a first down on a penalty. So a lot of shots by the Rams that couldn't get into the end zone. 27 yard field goal attack. Good snap. Good hold. And the kick is good. 13 nothing Rams on top with three seconds left to play here in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Three seconds to play in the first half and the Rams on top 13 nothing. Commanders are fortunate, though, that it's only 13 nothing the way this game has gone. Yeah, the Rams had the ball first and goal inside the 10 twice, unable to cash it in. Otherwise, this game would be 21 nothing. Well, Sean McVay talked to us about the confidence that he feels like his team was building, and they even built it through a loss to the Baltimore Ravens last week. And the defense must feel really good about themselves. Offense probably thinks we could do more. Evans with that little bouncer picked up by Bates, and Bates runs the last three seconds off the clock as he gets it up to the third.